I'm speaking on the subject this morning, biblical Pentecostalism. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. More than ever, we need the Spirit of God in the church to lead us, especially as we are living in very troublesome times. The whole world is changing right now. Just recently, the German Chancellor made a significant statement. I don't know how many people really understood what she said. As you know, Donald Trump has taken America out of the climate agreement among the countries. America is no longer taking the lead. And the German Chancellor said, it is time for Europe to take the lead in the world. That may seem like an insignificant statement or a by-the-way statement, but when you read the prophecies of Ezekiel and Revelation and Daniel, it does say that there is going to be a revived Roman Empire in the world in the last days. And it's going to begin in Europe and it's going to join with the Middle East. So when she said that Europe must take the lead, it is lining up with just what the Bible prophesied many, many years ago. And that tells us that we are living in the last days days. This is no time to have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. You better make up your mind to be ready for Jesus is coming very soon. And it's only by the Spirit of God we can be kept and we will keep the faith. What the early church experienced in Acts chapter 2 was the Pentecostal promises that God had given in the book of Joel when God said, in the last days, set the Spirit of God, I will pour out, God says, upon my people, my spirit, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And they shall see visions, and the old men shall dream dreams. Isaiah prophesied and says, with stammering lips shall they praise God. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself in John chapter 7 says, He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. The church was born in fire, and the church was meant to live in fire. A sanctifying fire, a holy fire, a refining fire. We need the fire of God in the church again. We need people who would say like David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. True Pentecostals love the house of God. True Pentecostals love God. True Pentecostals love one another. I can't understand how in the Pentecostal church we say that we have the spirit, yet we are backbiting against one another, yet we are revengeful against one another. How can we claim to have the spirit of God in our lives and we are living such decadent ways? Pentecost was a celebration in the Old Testament when the Jews would make, it was one of their three pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And they would go up to Jerusalem to celebrate what was called Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. They went up with the sheaves from the harvest and they would go up to offer this to the Lord 
as a thanksgiving. It is called Pentecost because it occurred 50 days after the Passover. And Israel will celebrate this year after year. But that was only typical of what God was going to do later on. It was typifying that God is going to send his spirit upon the church. At Mount Sinai, God came down. There was thunder. There was lightning. And the presence of God came down. And Exodus chapter 19 verse 26 tells us now that the Feast of Pentecost was connected to that event at Mount Sinai. That tells us that in the New Testament, Pentecost is connected to when God again revealed himself in Jesus Christ. But there was something better now for us. In the Old Testament, they did it as a feast. They did it ceremonially. But for us, it is the power, the real power, the infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, the event that took place on the day of Pentecost, and the way Luke puts it in the Greek, it was a specific time when God fulfilled his promise to baptize the church with the Holy Spirit. This is what we call spirit baptism. And if you want to understand it, when you were baptized in water, water was the element in which you were dipped in. And we baptized you. But spirit baptism is when Jesus himself took you and dipped you in the Holy Spirit. And it brought a change in your life. It brought transformation. Because where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And that's why I can live a liberated life. Sin has no bondage over me. The devil has no authority over me. I once was bound, but now I am free. I once was lost, but now I am found. I once was blind, but now I see I am free. And that's why Paul says, stand therefore in the liberty with which Christ has made you free. Isn't it amazing that many believers are going back into bondage. When you know what real freedom is, you don't want to go back. <laughs> That's why I would not go back into the world. That's why I will not go back into the things of this world. That's why the devil can't get me to go back. Because I have found true freedom in Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I may have persecution. I may have sicknesses. I may have rough circumstances. I may have adversities to face. But one thing, I'm not going back. I'm going forward. I'm going in Jesus' name. What the church experience is not just a historical event as many people say. They tell us that that was a one-time event never to reoccur. Now listen to me carefully. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Right in the book of Acts, we see a repetition again in the book of Acts chapter 10. So how can we say it was a one-time event? God meant not just for the church to have a one-time experience with the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and that was the end of it. God meant for the church to live till the rapture in the power of the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit, overcoming by the Spirit. The Christian life is a Spirit-filled life. And the Spirit of God never fails. Jesus said, when he went into the synagogue and he read from the scroll, the Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, you know what is biblical Prince Pentecostalism? Biblical Pentecostalism is using the power of the Spirit in your life as Jesus used the power of the Spirit. Now, I know it's nice to jump and dance and shake and run. I have no problem. But the real purpose of biblical Pentecostalism 
is to preach and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the brokenhearted, to set those who are in captive free through the blood of Jesus Christ. I think we have lost in many ways the essence of Pentecostalism. We think that Pentecostalism is just about miracles, signs, and wonders. And I thank God for signs and wonders. I thank God for miracles. I see healings. I see miracles. But Jesus did not tell me that it's all about miracles. What the Bible says, it's all about proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. And the signs and the wonders will follow. Today, we are following the signs and the wonders and telling Jesus follow us the apostles did not know about that the apostles all they knew was to preach Christ and the signs will follow at one time Jesus says no signs for you he said you are an adulterous generation he said only one sign I will give you and that's the sign of Jonah in other words, he was saying this is a sign you would receive. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, saints of God. More than the jump in the church, you've got to go out there and tell your co-workers that Jesus saves. You've got to tell your family that Jesus saves. You've got to tell people everywhere that Jesus is Lord. Not Ram, not Buddha, not Hare Krishna, not Confucius, but Jesus Christ. He's the Lord. And don't be afraid to proclaim it. Jesus says, if you are ashamed of me, then I will be ashamed of you before my father. Three things I want to deal with quickly. Number one, Pentecost is a continued living reality. Number two, Pentecost brings spiritual revelation revolution and number three Pentecost means divine reassurance Pentecost is a living reality because in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 Paul says and be filled with the spirit Paul when he uses the phrase there the Greek says and be being filled now you ever wonder why Many people don't seek God all the time, every day, and say, God, I want a fresh infilling today. A fresh infilling renews your heart. A fresh infilling gives you strength. A fresh infilling gives you hope. A fresh and filling. You, you don't want to just experience the divine power of God. That's why Zechariah says, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit set the Lord. Pentecost is a living reality. Not only did we have the phenomenon Acts chapter 2 and chapter 10, but at the turn of the 20th century, we had a great revival called the Azusa Street Revival when the Spirit of God was poured out upon the churches and they spoke in other tongues and there was a great revival and since then we have had many revivals taking place because God wants to come down in a powerful way. God, the Bible says, will rend the heavens and and he will come down. And when God comes to church, there is a difference. <laughs> I love it when God comes to church. You know why there's, there's a difference? Because when the Spirit of God enters, you just can't be the same. And when the Spirit of God is here, you will know it. Only people whose hearts are hardened by sin would not sense the Spirit of God. Only people who are carnal in their ways will not sense the Spirit of God. But when the Spirit of God comes down, you will know it. Now for those who argue it's a one-time event, let me just say this theologically, that we have documentary evidence that way beyond the completion of the Bible, there were gifts of the spirit in operation way on to 8200 so if they say that this ended and i know the theology of some people gifts of the spirit ended when the bible was completed why because paul says when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part shall be done away with now let me tell you this paul did not know 
that there was going to be a complete New Testament as we have today. Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But they were never able to see the completion of the Bible all put together as one. What was Paul talking about then? Paul was talking about Jesus Christ when he comes back in the rapture. Then that which is in part shall be done away with. Miracles will be done away with. Prophecies will cease. But those who serve the Lord truly will abide forever. The Pentecost event in Acts chapter 2 was the birth of the church of Jesus Christ. Now think about this. If God birthed the church in the spirit, how is it God will want us now to continue without that experience? If God birthed the church with the baptism with the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit, then God is saying, I want my church to be a spirit-filled church. Husbands who are spirit-filled don't beat their wives. Wives who are spirit-filled will submit to their husbands. Children who are spirit-filled will honor their parents. Young men who are spirit-filled will keep themselves holy. Young girls who are spirit-filled will tell that young man, hit the road. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The church of Jesus Christ is called to tell the world that Jesus is Lord. But we are called to live out the holiness of God in our lives. How can you tell the world that Jesus is Lord and you are living like a devil. In Acts chapter 2, Luke tells us they were all filled, in verse 4, with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. The Greek there, fulfilled, really means an outburst of the Spirit. So Luke was telling us that you can be full of the Spirit, but yet you will have the experiences of outbursts of the Spirit. In other words, we are all filled with the Spirit once you are saved. But there are times when the Holy Spirit will come down in a powerful way, in a different way. Have you ever experienced that? You are filled with the Spirit, but you feel that overflow of the Spirit, whether it's on a Sunday morning or in your private devotions. Many times I go to pray, and the Spirit of God is so powerful, I just have to speak in tongues for quite a while. Because I'm sensing the presence of God enveloping me. Now, if you don't learn how to live in the presence of God, everything in this world will pull you away. So God birthed the church with the baptism with the Holy Spirit and expects the church to live in that power. Biblical Pentecostalism brings a spiritual revolution. Now please note this, I said spiritual, not political revolution. I know that there's a theology that some are saying today that the church must take over government, the church must take over the world, the church must rule the world, and then we will say to Jesus, come again. If that were true, I tell you this morning, Jesus ain't coming again. Jesus is not waiting for the church to come into unity to come. Jesus is waiting for his father to say, son, go take your bride. What is a revolution? A revolution is a possible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. What the early church did when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit is overthrew the spiritual forces of the enemy. The Bible says that they overturn, they, they, they turn the world upside down as they preach the gospel. Peter, the same timid guy who denied Jesus Christ, was the apostle who stood up and proclaimed Jesus boldly. Stephen proclaimed Jesus even 
while he was being stoned to death. How could they do that? Because of the Spirit of God. Listen to me. Having the Spirit of God does not mean that you will not suffer. You will suffer. You will be persecuted. But when you've got the Spirit of God inside of you, you would say like Paul, whatever comes my way, whether persecution or suffering, whether I'm beaten, I will serve Jesus Christ. I don't know why it is many Pentecostals think that when you have the Spirit, everything has just got to flow so smoothly. You ain't got no problems. You better think again. <laughs> they turned the world upside down. Such a revolution changes our lives. And such a revolution makes us witnesses. Now who's a witness? The Greek word martyr means a witness is one who testifies about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Now here's the thing. You testify as if you were right there and you beheld how Jesus died, how he was buried, and how he rose again. Now in reality... We were not there. We were not, none of us was there physically. But the Spirit of God who abides in us, He was there and He raised Jesus from the dead. And He makes that so real in our lives. Have you ever wondered how a drunkard can be transformed into a saint? Have you ever wondered how a murderer can be transformed and become a child of God? It is a spiritual revolution, a work of the Holy Spirit that changes our lives. I never knew that I would be a preacher. I never knew I would be where I am today, but God knew. But I thank God the day that I surrendered to Him, there was a spiritual revolution that took place in my heart, and now I am living for Him. I'm no longer living for the world. I'm no longer living for the devil, but I'm living for Jesus because a spiritual revolution took place. Now, when you experience that spiritual revolution, you are never the same. I remember we sang the song long ago, I'll never be the same again. Since my life has been changed, I am not the same. I'll never be the same again. The early church was not afraid to tell the world about Jesus Christ. They were not afraid. In fact, Peter and John said, we cannot obey man. We must obey God. They would rather be imprisoned than to stop preaching the gospel. Biblical Pentecostalism is about proclamation and not simply about how we feel. And I know you're going to feel great when the Spirit of God comes down, yes? But it's primarily about proclaiming Jesus Christ. How many of you tell others about Jesus Christ? You know how many Pentecostals are ashamed to tell their friends? They don't want to offend their friends. They don't want to offend their family. Sometimes the person who you think don't want to hear your gospel is the person who is crying out inside for somebody to tell them which way to go. Who would have thought that the Apostle Paul would have been a man of God? He was persecuting the church. He was pulling out believers. And he was committing them to prison. He was doing so much against the church of God that even the believers became afraid of this man before he got saved. But that was the man that Jesus confronted on the road to Damascus. And Paul was transformed. Paul totally changed the same man who was persecuting the church was the same man God used to now build a church. You have problems in your family? The Spirit can bring a revolution. You have problems in your marriage? 
the spirit can bring a revolution. You have problems in a job, the spirit can bring a revolution. The spirit of God can change your whole situation. Thirdly, biblical Pentecostalism means that God gives us divine reassurance. Now all of us have got assurance. Amen. We sing blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. But the Spirit of God, Paul tells us, is given to us as a down payment or reassurance. God tells us that He gave us His Spirit to confirm that that which He has started in us he will finish. Now, if you have the Spirit of God, you have the assurance and the reassurance. Now, let's be honest. Don't you go through moments when you wonder if God is there? When Job was going through all his afflictions, he asked the question, where is God? My maker who gives songs in the night. I've gone through times in my life when I felt like giving up. Yes, you may think the pastor doesn't have those moments. <laughs> Thank you, I am human. We all go through moments when we wonder about the sovereignty of God. We wonder about the promises of God. If you are God, why am I in this condition? Psalm 34 verse 10. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, I like the buts in the Bible. <laughs> the thief cometh not but to steal and kill, but I am come that they might have life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, somebody say but with me. <laughs> Whatever you are going through, remember this. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. God delivered Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. God delivered Daniel from the lion's den. God delivered Paul and Silas from prison. God delivers his people. But if God is going to deliver you, you first got to be in a place where you need deliverance. So if God ordains for you to be in a place where you need deliverance, just rejoice. You know what Paul and Silas did? They just began to sing at midnight hour. Paul did not complain about the prison. He did not complain about the chains on his feet. They did not complain about what they were going through. The Bible says they began to praise God. Now, real Pentecostalism is praising God in the valley. It's praising God in the wilderness. It's praising God when you're going through the worst situations in your life. And like David, you would say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. All the days of my life, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord.